Hey everybody, it's John from 9142 Props and Armory here in the shop again today to show off one of my newest toys, the CR10 3D printer from Creality. Now I've been printing for a long time now, well, in the grand scheme of things as far as 3D printing goes, a fairly long time, a little over two years now. And I've had my original machine, my one and only machine, my Monoprice Maker Select i3, for that entire length of time. It's been a fantastic machine for me. The quality out of it is great. Love it. However, my biggest gripe with it, and my only gripe truly, is the fact that the printable area is not big enough for what I need to do. At 200 by 200 by 180 high, the print volume of this machine just doesn't cut it for some of the crazy things that I like to print and I like to make. Case in point, this guy right here. Number two right there. Not shown is the entire rest of the armor as well with that. So I like to make big projects and work on large prints. If print volume is your issue like mine was with my previous machine, I'm going to give you a look at the CR10 that I've had now for about three weeks, talk about some things that I like about it. Uh, so far, not a whole lot of things that I don't. And we're going to look at that because remember, everybody, Bigger is better. Let's see what we got right now. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the CR10 from Creality. I needed a larger format printer. This fit the bill for what I was looking for, and budget-wise as well. It's a very affordable printer that allows you to print much larger things and with some minor tweaks to it to be able to print things a lot faster. So basic specs on the printer is the fact that you have a build volume of 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 400 high. So roughly 12 by 12 by 16 inches high. So compared to my previous machine, an 8x8 by about 7.5, I can do a lot more with this. It's a lot less hassle for me to print large things like this when I don't have to cut everything into a 1,000 pieces in order to print it. As a perfect example, if you take a look at the video of the monitor up there, that is the printer printing my full-scale BB-8 dome. Previously, I printed another one of these domes um, on my monoprice with a smaller bed. And quite honestly, it was a pain. The prints were great, but I had to print this thing in so many pieces. Roughly, just to get what I have right here, just for the dome structure on this one with the previous printer, we were looking at about 18 pieces just to get this, plus a little bit more. And print time was about 120 hours. Now I was able to print this, the main part of the dome here in two pieces. This ring from here on down was a single piece. The dome from here up to here was a single piece. And the top portion here was a separate one because it has to remain removable. Because this will be a functional piece. So this entire thing was able to be printed on the bed. Now, conceivably, you could print this entire head on there without a problem. The volume of the bed would not be an issue for doing that. However, for the fact that this is going to be a functional droid, that I needed those parts to be separate. So the volume is huge. It is huge. You could print some big things on here. Um, I printed out as a first test on the, of the machine, not this particular helmet right here. Same helmet, though, a Shore Trooper helmet. I printed this entire helmet on the CR-10 in two pieces. Two pieces. Everything from here up was a single piece, and everything from here down was a single piece. It cut my print time almost by half. The only major change that I've done to this machine, because it is completely stock with the exception of I put a larger nozzle in there. Instead of the standard 0.4 nozzle that it comes with, I added a 0.6 so that I could print larger things 
a little bit faster, minimizing the number of perimeters or shells or however you want to refer to it as while I'm doing prints to speed things up. The machine can handle it without a problem. 0.6 nozzle in there, 100 millimeters a second, not a problem for it. Keeps on going, keeps up with it. No other upgrades to the hot end, nothing else at all. It's fantastic so far. I've had it for about three weeks. I'm very, very impressed with it. I haven't had fail prints. I haven't had any clogs or jams or anything else like that. No issues with reliability with the control box, with Marlin software, anything at all. Outside of nozzle changes, the only other thing that I've changed on there is what I've done forever with my other printer is using Lexan on the build surface to print on. A lot of people love to print on glass. It's not a favorite thing of mine. I've got another video that I'll put a link down in the description about that and the benefits of using Lexan to print on, but I prefer to do that over the glass. So the glass I got with, with mine was just fine. It is nice and level. It's just sitting back behind the cabinet for this printer not being used right now. So overall, the speed of this machine that you can print at with the quality that you can get out of it is really good. Now you can slow things down and you can get some really pretty parts out of this. And I've got printing right now another little toy for my son because he loves this thing almost as much as I do because I can make him anything he wants to. Have. He likes Omnom, watches the videos on YouTube, print him a little toy in an hour or two, and he's happy as can be. So overall the machine, comparing it briefly to my previous machine, if this thing proves to be minutely as reliable as this one has been, I will be extremely, extremely happy. After a couple of weeks, I have no complaints. No issues out of the box. Setup was very easy. It took me about 25 minutes. I had it leveled right away and it was printing in about half an hour from the time that I cut open that box. You can't argue with that. The machine is sturdy. The gantry is sturdy on it. I don't see vibration or ringing as you go up that up that Z-axis on there. I don't really see a need, honestly, for braces on there. People do all kinds of additions and mods on there. And maybe if I was printing even faster than 100 millimeters a second as a top speed, I might want that to help out a little bit. But out of the box, it's a really impressive machine. And the best part about it, other than the fact that you can print large stuff and that it prints fast and the quality is really good, is the fact of the price. Average price on this thing right now is less than 400 bucks. You can pick them up and get them delivered to your door for about 350 with promos that are going on. There's tons of outlets that have them. Uh, Gearbest, Amazon, uh, Banggood has them, and then there's other other vendors out there as well that have them. So yeah, it's just a, it's a stock CR10. Regular CR10, it's not the CR10S that has the additional uh, Z-axis motor. It is the standard one with a single single motor on there. No issues with that. That was the one thing that I thought I might have to do as an upgrade on it right away to put in that second motor, but so far I have not seen an issue to do so. Very impressive machine. Um, I think what I'll do with this one is that after some time and you know, time spent playing and making some more fun stuff, which like this, which I printed on here in about eh, just about 12, 12 or 13 hours altogether to do that. Uh, and I spent some more time with this really abusing the hell out of it because I abuse the hell out of my printers. Uh, the one behind me here, the amount of price has 133 days of print time on it. It's been powered on for 133 days over the past two years. So I'm using these things constantly. What I'll do with this is, this is just kind of an initial thoughts, an initial look, and just a basic talking, you know, basic overview. It's just a basic, a basic overview of the machine. Is that after some time, maybe in a couple months, maybe in three months from now, or 
a little bit longer than that, we'll do another video on it, just kind of a follow-up to let you know what I think over time. Uh, a lot of people kind of sit back and wait, and I kind of did that a little bit myself with this machine, just to see what, how well it stood the test of a little bit of time and some, some more use. So I'll let you know about that too. But initially, I'm impressed. I gotta say, for 300 bucks, my original machine two years ago, I spent $450 on for something much, much smaller. $300, 350 400 bucks, it's worth it. The quality that you get out, the speed that you can print with, it's fantastic. It absolutely is. So final initial thoughts on the CR10 from Creality. Print volume, fantastic. Price, excellent. 350 to 400 bucks. You can't beat that for what you get from this machine. Print quality has been excellent so far. No issues. Reliability, very, very good. So overall, if you're looking for either a first machine, which this one is very easy to handle, you don't have to put it together. You put a couple screws together out of the box, assemble it, and you're ready to go. If you've been printing for a while and are looking for something a little bit bigger, you're looking for an extra machine, it's fantastic. I'm going to get back to doing the things that I like to do in here, after, of course, doing some editing. Not that that's ever necessary. But I'm going to get back to working on BB-8, get back to working on some other projects, keep this printer going. I'll get you a longer-term look at this down the road. Make sure if you like the video, please thumbs up. If you've got a comment or question on the CR-10 or on 3D printing in general, put it down in the comments. Uh, I'm going to do a couple contests. Um, I'll do one probably at 250 subscribers. Almost... Almost at 100 subscribers. So as a contest for 250 subscribers, when we get there, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway here for an E11 blaster that I've done and painted. This one is not 3D printed. This was kind of a fix of another one that I found, oddly enough, as a Halloween accessory. It was relatively inexpensive, so I cleaned it up a little bit painted it, made it look pretty passable. It looks pretty good. So at 250 subscribers, I'm going to give one of these away to one of you. So be sure to subscribe, thumbs up on the video, throw those comments up down below, and thanks for checking things out today. All right, catch you next time. Thanks.